Well, Eddie Lenehan here again on this night, a February night this time, a little bit more hopeful than the last time, although still cold. Now, my subject tonight is roads in all their complexity, beauty and ugliness. And the roads of Ireland, and God knows there's enough of them, windy, straight, the good and the bad. They opened the down. But I'd ask you, first of all, try, if you can, to picture Ireland, this country of ours, when it was only forest and swamps and bog. Ah. And you could only look for a solid footing to drive your herd of cattle from place to place. Because remember, cattle was all that people had in those distant days. Hence, the word bohor. Isn't that the word for road today? Bo, road. Uh, or maybe some people would say, were, were rivers the first roads? I don't know. But we're left with the word bohor, whether we like it or not. And I was talking to this old man one time and he was very very clear he told me and I'll repeat what he told me he said the first roads in Ireland were against the hill he was quite definite about that the first roads in Ireland he said were against the hill that's why today he said so many of our oldest roads are up and down up and down rising and falling with the natural landscape maybe he was right and he said that the reason for that was when people had to walk they had to have dry feet when they had a load on their back and when they tamed horses he said that well they drove their horses with the hill uh, when they had a small load on their horses when they had saddle horses well no he didn't specify the kind of saddles they had i suppose they were not the fancy saddles of later years but when they were riding their horses they rode their horses with the hill but when horses came he said to have heavier loads and maybe he meant by that when wheeled vehicles came uh, they had to go around those hills and that he said was the time that real roads as we know them today had to come into existence because the loads would be too heavy for horses to pull up those hills and I suppose he has a point there too so in those distant times roads roads came in to be in various ways now wherever you are on this night picture whether you're in a town a city or in a country place what it was like especially if you're in a city or a town what it was like before streets were built there you can still look around you and see the lie of the land because no matter how many houses were built or have been built or are in the process of being built the lie of the land stays the same it won't change that. Up and down the hills are the same and houses will have to go with the lie of that land. For example, uh, look at Cork. Probably Ireland's most obvious example of that. Look at some of the hills in Cork that you will have to uh, climb and take your breath a few times before you get to the top of them. I'm talking now of streets. Streets. And where I come from, in Kerry, we still have the high road and the low road. There's no houses in those, but there's still the high road and the low road. Yeah. But, but, in those roads, no matter where they are, and they have one weak point, every single one of them, in all ages, and always will. And what is that? Bridges, of course. All kinds of roads from the from the, the, the 
narrowest to the widest, to the biggest highway, to the motorway, to the little boreen. They all have their weak point and that is the bridge. If the bridge gives way, <laughs> the travel stops. Now, across the crossings began with fords and uh, a ford has to be protected. The Irish word for a ford is R, R for the TH. And the protection that was given to a ford first was uh, a castle. Look at, for example, Ahaclea, Dublin. Balia Ahaclea, the town of the ford of the, of the hurdles. Look at uh, so many other places that have the same name, Atlone, Aha Luin. And if you go through your memory and if your Irish is anywhere reasonable at all, you'll find the same thing, Aha this, Aha that, where there is a ford across a river. And those fords, as I said, had to be protected if they were any way important at all. Look at the castles that were built to protect those fords. Look at King John's Castle in Limerick. That was a vital crossing of the Shannon. Look at uh, Bunratty Castle. Now you would look at that little crossing there, you'd look at the, the, the Ratty River, because that's the river, Bun Ratty, and you'd say, why such a big castle for such a small little river? But it was a tidal river, you see. It was a tidal river and obviously it was an important crossing. Look at Carrick and Shure Castle. Look at Carling Ford Castle and there you go again, Carling Ford. Carling Ford and Clare Castle. Castle. That's where County Clare got its name. The Castle of Clare. Look at Care in Tipperary. Castle. And so on and so on and so on. All over the country, castles built to protect river crossings, north, south, east and west, because the bridge was a vital part of the road. If the bridge could be held at a time of warfare, the enemy couldn't pass. And um, there was another thing, of course, <laughs> because roads, rivers, Bridges, folds, all went together. They've always been associated and therefore caused trouble. Trouble, trouble. I'll get to that in a moment. Now, let me give you a little example for people who have passed that way. Down near Latoon, just below Ennis, where the famous fairy bush is, there are three bridges side by side. There's the motorway bush, uh, a bridge, excuse me, and that's on the M18. There's the N18 bridge, which these are two are being used, of course, now yet. And there's the old bridge, which is right between them. Most people don't even notice that now, but it is there, right between them. And in that old bridge, that's the exciting one, because during the Troubles, in 1920, the, during the, the War of Independence, I talked to an old man. He said that he was there the night that himself and some of the boys tried to blow it up. But it failed them. <laughs> they must have been a little bit amateurish because instead of blowing it up, they, and it happened in many a place, they tried to blow it up but they blew it down instead and of course you don't uh, succeed in blowing an arch of a bridge down you should go below and try to blow it up instead it failed them and of course they had to run for it because the black and tans arrived and luckily they made their escape the bridge still survives they only managed to blow one uh, parapet of it and sure enough one parapet is still missing uh, I think it wasn't renewed because the troubles continued. I was often fascinated by 
roads going back to Cromwell's time and before it. Uh, how did that evil spirit, Cromwell, how did he manage to get his cannon around from place to place because he had many heavy guns and you can see the results of his guns on various tower houses, castles we would call them, all over the country which he blasted uh, into submission. But he did, he did, and uh, he managed to drag his cannon from here to there to here to there, and so did his generals Ayrton and others after him, because Cromwell was only in the country for nine months and left his mark. Uh, he was a great general, but he wasn't a very nice person. We'll have to give him that. But uh, uh, how did they get their cannon around? There obviously had to be some good roads at the time. So, uh, I don't know, but the roads obviously were there and uh, it has given me time to scratch my head anywhere. But uh, if you look at the six inch map, the Ordnance map, you'll see the traces of some other great uh, mysterious roads. For example, in County Clare, that is the traces of Sir Donut's road, that was Sir Donut O'Brien. And another historical figure of the 17th century, you can see the traces of his road across the map in North uh, West Clare. And we can tell who he was and why was his road there? What makes it so special to him? Well, you can follow his history if you like. And there are other roads around various parts of Ireland uh, that will follow other landowners of his type, well worth uh, looking them up and saying, oh, why did he seem to own, or he seemed to own, or he seemed to own from this, that, and the other part of the country, that road, this road, the other road, a worthwhile uh, exercise in historical research. And um, you can also uh, see that on these kind of roads, there were tolls and bridges that just like at Bunratty Castle. Now many people think when they're going to Bunratty Castle they see Dirty Nellies, a pub, oh, Dirty Nellies, and think it's only a pub. Dirty Nellies wasn't just a pub at all. Dirty Nellies was a toll house on the little bridge that's there. That little humpback bridge outside Dirty Nellies was uh, the original bridge on that road to Limerick to Galway and Dirty Nellies as it is now called was the toll house for that bridge but remember that's only a modern name uh, some of the old people that I knew in that uh, locality were highly indignant at that name they said the two sisters that ran that 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 pub originally, uh, they were they were spotless. They were spotless, and they kept that place uh, spotlessly, and it only got its name from some of the soldiers that used to be there during the emergency during the Second World War, who were stationed in the locality. They gave it mockingly. They gave it that name, but it was no way dirty in any way. That's only a gimmick name uh, that's held on since Dirty Nellies. It was a lovely place and always kept that way by those two sisters who, who uh, kept the place originally. But it was a toll house and if you go up the river there, you'll get a, a further toll gate. A toll gate that was uh, built by a local landlord who built the bridge there further up the river and the remains of the toll gates are still there. So, some of these places, you think it's only in the modern motorways that you're being robbed <laughs> by having to pay a toll fee? Not at all. They were being paid also in the 18th century by to the landlords who built these toll, toll gates, uh, but who maintained the bridges. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to travel. Now, they're not so far from where I live here. There's a road and it is dead straight for miles. It's called the Connacht. And you'd say, what, what, the Connacht? Isn't Connacht the name for Connacht? Well, it is. But the Connacht leads straight 
Toads Connacht and Galway Bay and it was built you know when you see a road built straight that it was either built on the old track of a railway but there was never any railway here it was built through bog and rock because this is the edge of the burn and it was built through bogland and through the stone landscape of the burn and I inquired from old people what, what was this for and it was built to bring oysters from Galway Bay to the railway station in Ennis so that they could get to London quickly quickly uh, and it served its purpose very very well a landlord got it built and I think financed it partly so that the oysters could be got from Galway Bay from I think Kinvara in Galway Bay so that they could be got quickly and got to London through by train and across to London so some of these things uh, they should be known about I think uh, roads have a special special uh, use but very often the historical knowledge of them can be lost if it's not recorded. Now, the old road from Limerick through Six Mile Bridge on to Ennis before the new roads was built. Uh, the two new roads were built. First of all, what was the N18, now the modern motorway, the M18. The old road used to go through Cratlow and at that time Cratlow was a huge oak forest. They say that some of the oak trees in Cratlow were used in in some of the public buildings in London. So such there were such wonderful oak trees there that some of them were cut down in order to provide roofing. They say for some of the modern, uh, not modern, some of the public buildings in London. But there was the other side of it. Those people who passed through the woods in Cratlow had every chance of being robbed by highwaymen who resided there. And was there any truth in that? It seems there was. Because a man who worked in the forestry, uh, in the modern forestry, because so much of the old Cratlow woods were cut down that only a fraction, fraction of them remained. So the forestry department replanted with modern trees, the ugly modern trees, uh, a great deal of it. And one of the workers who worked there told me that when they were replanting it, there was a hoard of coins found there uh, of the 17th century of uh, I think it was James the second gun money was found there which will tend to make you wonder was there some truth in the belief that some of these outlaws were living there uh, Ulthucks they used to call them which of course translated into Ulthucks and the Ulthucks were very often thought to be some of the remnants of uh, the army that was defeated at the Boyne and again then at the Battle of Ochram where they scattered, scattered into the Schlievochti mountains and after that down, down into, into various places before they finally ended up at the Siege of Limerick in 16. 91. So there very probably is truth in that. He told me that he saw the hoard of coins that was discovered when the uh, workers was were working there uh, at the forestry plantation. So another one of those things when, when the old road was running through Cratlow. Now an old, another old man told me that and he explained to me a most interesting story about Brian Boru's road in East Clare. And he pointed out to me a bit of it was here, a bit of it was there, another bit of it came this way, another bit, fractions of it that still still remained. He, he explained to me uh, how a little bit of it still existed here in the land, there in the land. Now when you can go back all the way to Brian Boru, nearly a thousand years that is something, and that is something special, is it not?
So, so it is remarkable how the remnants of these roads, it is uh, extremely difficult to wipe them out once they have been in use. Difficult to wipe them out, not just from the land, but from people's memory. Now, there's, there's another thing that should be said, perhaps, that <laughs> where there were roads, as I mentioned, there were highwaymen. Many of these men, their lands were confiscated and they took to the roads. Partly out of revenge, partly when your lands are confiscated, what do you do? Uh, you have to live. To some people, there were enemies, naturally, the people who got their land. There were enemies, mortal enemies. But to the ordinary people, they were heroes. That depended on which side you were. And of course, which religion you were. Uh, some of them, we know their names. Uh, Galloping Hogan of Tipperary, the man who who helped Patrick Sarsfield to blow up the 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 ammunition train of of King William at Ballyseedy or the Ballyneedy, well Ballyneedy, and uh, you had then uh, Redmond O'Hanlon of South Armagh. You had uh, Eamon O'Hnick, down again in Tipperary, Eamon Ryan of Tipperary. You had Willie Brennan, where is where the Brennan on the moor, Brennan on the moor, excuse my singing. And um, he was down in the Waterford side, in Cork Waterford, his exploits were from that side. And... Uh, you had many of them, many of them, and I tell you, they kept the travellers on, 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 especially rich travellers on their toes. But, of course, m most of them were hunted down by the military uh, in the end. Very many of them were given away by their own supporters because when a big reward was handed out, you know, at that time, it was hard to resist, and, well, a few of them made their escape. A few of them made their escape, but they have gone down in history as great heroes, because, you know, yourself, like the Kelly Gang in Australia, like many an outlaw in America, there's something romantic about these fellows on the road against all the odds, fellows who have been dispossessed by the law. There is something romantic about them and when the odds are against you, a hundred to one or a thousand to one, well, well I suppose the ending usually was the same. You were either hanged or transported to Dan Van Diemen's land and uh, to be remembered, I suppose, is something. Whereas the people who transported them, the judges, the people who inherited their lands, most of those are forgotten. Deservedly so, I suppose, because they didn't deserve to be, to be remembered since the lands were ill-gotten. That can fairly be said. They were confiscated. They were confiscated, 